welcome to Chuck's Hangar. I know what you're thinking. Hang on, isn't this supposed to be up? Final flight simulator stuff. Well, um, that's why I got this thing because uh, what we're looking at is a simulator where you get to tune up your aeroplane and repair it. Um, see what I did there, yeah? I'm always thinking. <laughs> uh, now you might be able to see it on the screen behind me because uh, what we're going to be taking a look at is plane mechanic simulator, which is kind of interesting. Um, so, uh, are you ready? Let's check it out. And welcome to Chuck's Hangar. So here we are with the uh, load screen for plane mechanic simulator. This is uh, what appears a couple of seconds after you start the game up. You get a splash screen for Disaster Studios, who are the developers of uh, Plane Mechanic Simulator. And if you're curious, this is made in the Unity graphics engine, which um, is good for games and simulations. Um, Kerbal Space Program is made in Unity, uh, and there are NASCAR racing games and first-person shooters and stuff like that, uh, also made in Unity. But um, there is also this, Plane Mechanic Simulator. Now, um, if we take a look at the... Um, uh, what you get here, obviously I can click on this thing here and I can exit the game. Uh, if we click here, we can see the credits of the people who developed this. Um, and if we click there and have a look at the audio, obviously what you can do is you can select sound effects, ambient sound, music uh, in the background. So if you want music playing, you can have that. If you want sort of ambience of... Uh, of people chatting in the background and the sound of spanners being dropped and that sort of thing. You can have that. Uh, there are video options for if you've got a fancy video card. You will notice that I have one of these settings turned off, which is ambient occlusion. Um, and specifically, you can see that um, I could have had that on if I wanted to. Um, but personally, I chose to turn it off because if you're working on your airplane and you go with the sun behind your airplane um, it goes into silhouette and it's sort of difficult to see um, see the um, the tiny bits that you're trying to grab hold of uh, looks kind of cool but makes makes the game a little bit harder to to play so uh, I turned ambient occlusion off um, but so I just found it a little bit easier to do that now any game or simulation which has you manipulating things and replicating movements of your hand. Anyone who's played first person shooters or RPGs will know that um, they, to a very large extent, stand or fall on how good or bad the graphical user interface is. And I have to say that the graphical user interface for Plane Mechanic Simulator is for the most part, really very good. If I click on the controls here, I have this on the uh, default controls. You could mess around with this if you wanted to, if you wanted to change the keys. Um, anyone who's familiar with first-person shooters or RPGs will be familiar with um, W, S, A, and D as the movement keys. Um, so you, when you use that, you can put your hand on the left hand side of the the keyboard and your fingers sort of naturally fall on the w s and a and d keys convenient for um right-handed people that are operating the mouse um, not quite so convenient for left-handed people but of course what you could do is if you were left-handed and you have your mouse on the other side of your keyboard what you could do is you could i don't know maybe use j i l and k with your right hand for the movements and then use your, your mouse on the opposite side so you can effectively create a mirror image of this but uh, for the vast majority of, uh, of right handed players this is going to be a, a good layout um, you, your finger would naturally, your little finger would naturally fall on the left shift key uh, if you want to run um, and then you move your hand down a little bit and you've got um, the C, Z or Z if you prefer if you're um, American and F keys for um, crouching, zooming and crawling. You do very occasionally have to sort of crouch down to, to get to things. Um, and you can zoom in using the F key or you can roll your mouse wheel if you prefer. You can see that we've got disassembly mode, assembly mode and inspect mode on 1, 2 and 3 on the, the top row of your keyboard. And again, if your fingers are on um, the W, A, S and D keys, um, it's a simple shift uh, to get your first second and third fingers on the one two and three keys and wherever you're moving around whether you're on the WAS and D keys or the one two three and four 
uh, or sort of one, two, and three, or on um, the Z key and the F key and the C key, um, your thumb will naturally tend to fall on the the space bar, which is your your interact key. So that's a very, very, very good interface, and it, it only very occasionally um, sort of glitches a little bit. You know, you'll get sort of stuck up a ladder, and you'll have to sort of like press the keys a couple of times to get yourself out of it. But um, generally speaking, it works pretty well. Uh, and then last but not least out of all these things, when we go to the game thing there, you can see my character that I created. Um, obviously he's called Chalk. Um, he's done some of the first missions where you get to play around with a Tiger Moth, but we'll, uh, we'll see in a minute. And now he's graduated on to a squadron at the start of the Battle of Britain, number 64 squadron. So I'll be working on Spitfires and he's, um, he started off as an aircraftman, second class, and now he's an aircraftman, first class. Um, as he progresses, my character, he'd end up being a leading aircraftsman. You can see progress is only 27% at the minute. There are a couple of other options on the right hand side. If I want to give myself a bit more of a challenge, I can put time limits on the missions. Uh, and if I want to put it in exploit mode, I can have it so that um, things aren't highlighted. Uh, I've not got it on expert mode at the moment because obviously I was making videos um, of the the kind of gameplay, if you will, for you guys. Um, and so I wanted the, the screws and stuff to be highlighted. So um, that's your interface. So let's take a look at what it's like when you actually play it. Okay, so here we are on one of our the plane mechanic simulators missions. Uh, it starts you off with fairly simple missions and they get more and more complex to the extent where you can uh, end up completely taking the engine apart. And I mean literally every single thing so that you, uh, you've you literally just got the engine casing left, you've taken off the, the barrels and the the cylinder heads and you've removed the pistons and you've removed the crankshaft and the, the camshaft and everything so so literally it's a very very detailed um, replication of the engine but we've got a fairly simple task here you can see our work order um, so the aircraft type is a Tiger Moth um, I've not got um, the timer on so there's no time to complete it there's my name there's the pilot's name there's a report from the pilot it says please check the undercarriage before the next flight and occasionally the oil pressure is too low so I've got to check the undercarriage I've got to refill the aircraft and I've got to fix the oil system so let's go let's do all that sort of thing yeah so here's our work area and I'll give you a quick tour of the work area now over here there is a workbench so uh, when we take some parts off we can have a go at fixing them uh, and if we need to uh, need to get replacement parts, we'll be able to get them from this vehicle here. Uh, there is the fuel bowser, so we can refuel the aircraft. There is the oil bowser, if we uh, we want to, to put some oil in the thing. Uh, so if we wanted to, we could uh, pick up the oil bowser and tow it over to the aircraft. I'm, I'm not going to need that, so uh, I'm going to put that thing back. Um, so. Yeah, but we are going to refuel the aircraft, so I'm going to need the ladder for this. So I'm going to pick up the ladder and I'm going to walk over to the aeroplane. And you, I can drop this anywhere I like, but if I get too close to the aircraft, I'm not going to be able to put the thing down. So uh, I'm going to pop the ladder here, like that. Now uh, I can climb the ladder, and there is the fuel tank, and I can zoom in with the F key or I can roll the mouse key so I can see the fuel cap. So I'm going to unscrew the fuel cap. So I've removed the fuel cap, I'm hitting F to zoom out, I'm going to right click um, to get free of it and I should be able to jump down off the ladder. Very occasionally you can get stuck if you put the ladder too close uh, and then you find yourself having to hit the escape key and stuff like that. So you have to be a little bit careful about where you place the ladder. So uh, over to the fuel bowser, I'm going to pick up the fuel hose, I'm going to walk back over to the aircraft, climb up the ladder uh, I'm going to insert the, um, the fuel into the aircraft um, so we do that now you can see that it's not giving me the option to uh, insert the fuel hose and that's probably because I've not got the ladder close enough to be able to do that so what I'm going to do I'm going to come off the ladder and uh, pop that hose back I'm going to come around the side of it so I can take the ladder I'm going to move a little bit closer like that. and I'm going to drop the ladder there. should let me do it now. So, pick that up, climb up the ladder, and there we go. Needed to be a little bit closer. So, insert the fuel hose. 
and in it goes, um, off the ladder, back over to the fuel bowser, round to the back of it, go to the bowser control, a bit of space, pump starts, you can see the fuel level there, so it's a little bit low, I get on this thing, click on it, move it to the right, and the fuel pump works, and now I'm full. So turn that off, right click to come out of this interface, back up the ladder, remove the fuel hose, off the ladder, put the thing back away, and the fuel truck, truck will drive away. Because I don't need that anymore. So off it goes. Uh, make sure I put the fuel cap back on. Um, now I'm going to have to hit the two key to be able to access that. And that's back on good and tight. Right click to come out of the interface, off the ladder, grab the ladder, get it out of the way, pull that neatly away. That's there. Now the other things that I needed to do was I needed to inspect the undercarriage and I needed to repair the oil system because there's a problem with the oil system. I don't know what it is, but I'll have to investigate that. So uh, let's have a look at the undercarriage. So uh, I can hit the three key to inspect things. So I hit three and I'm going to check this tyre. and you can see that the wheel is damaged, so I've got a problem with that. Now let's have a look at some other things. Compression leg, I'm inspecting that, that appears to be fine. You'll notice that when something is damaged, it's red. When it's fine, it's yellow, uh, and if it's in pristine condition, it's green. Um, so let's come around the other side, have a look at this side. Um, so I'm going to inspect this compression leg, and we can see that that one is damaged. Um, let's have a look at some of the bits and pieces. Um, so we'll inspect this wheel, fine, and we'll inspect the wheel cap, and the wheel cap's fine, and so on and so forth. So we can, we can inspect all these things and uh, see what kind of condition they're in, um, and what have you. Now, uh, I can see that there are two parts that are damaged on this, uh, this wheel here, and this compression leg here. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to jack up the aircraft now. Um, Strictly speaking, um, if you've ever taken a wheel off an aeroplane or off a car, what you would be doing is you would be undoing the nut before you uh, jack the thing up because you don't want the wheel turning when you're undoing the nut. But um, yeah, it's not totally realistic in that sense. So let's have uh, let's have a bit of a play at this. Um, so uh, I'm coming out of inspection mode. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and what I need to do is I need to remove this wheel cap. So click on that and then undo bolts <coughs> Excuse me. and off comes the wheel cap and now it's not letting me undo this and that's because I've not jacked it up um, uh, so round on the other side it will be the same story I can zoom in on this and I can click on this wheel cap And off comes this wheel cap, but I can't remove this wheel now. We know that this wheel's okay, and it's the wheel on the other side that's, the, that's got the problem. But I would need to remove the wheel to be able to get to the compression leg to remove that. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to jack up the aeroplane. Uh, so over here we've got a jack. Uh, pick up the jack. Plonk it underneath the aeroplane. I'm going to crouch down so that I can get to it a little bit better. And then... There is a little crank handle that you can see here, and I'm going to do that. Now I have to rotate the mouse to do that, so I'm moving my mouse around, and this thing is jacking up, and I've got the thing off the ground. So now what I should be able to do is I should be able to remove this wheel, and you can see that I can. So I click on that, and I remove the wheel nut, and off comes the wheel. And back around the other side, I need to take the wheel off. I click on that, remove the wheel nut, the wheel comes off, and now I'm going to be able to get to the right compression leg, which we know is damaged. So I click on this thing, like that, and there are three bolts that I need to undo. So I undo this one, undo this one, and I undo this one. 
and off comes the compression leg. Now, uh, I've got two damaged parts in my inventory. So if I check my inventory by hitting the escape key, I can see on my inventory that I've got uh, wheel cap, which is fine, wheel, which is damaged, wheel, which is fine, and right compression leg, which is damaged. And none of these items are repairable. They would have to be replaced. So I need to get some replacement parts from this vehicle here. So I click here, uh, I tick, because I want a new wheel, I tick this because I need a new right compression leg, and then I click here and I sign for the parts, and I've got replacement parts. So over to the aircraft again, and then crouch down, and I need to get that compression leg back on. Now if I hit three to go into inspection mode, or two, or what have you, um, it will give me the parts that I can replace. So I click on the compression leg. Here we go. One bolt two bolts and just move the view a little bit um, and three bolts there make sure they're all on now of course what I need to do is I also need to replace the wheel click there put the wheel back on zoom in a little bit tighten up the wheel knot um, you would put um, a little split pin through uh, through the, the nut there to, in reality, to stop that thing spinning around. It doesn't make you go to the extent of doing that. So let me put the wheel cap on, um, but I do have to put all of those screws back on. Now, if I left this um, with that undone and then filled out that I've completed the mission, it probably would let me complete the mission, but it would mark me down because I hadn't tightened all the screws. Yeah? So you, you make sure that you tighten all of the screws. Now right click to come out of that mode there, come around here and put the other wheel on, tighten up the knot there, put the wheel cap on, tighten all the screws for that. Now in expert mode, it's not going to tell me when I've completed the mission, but I've not got it in expert mode. So it would tell me when I've completed the mission, and you'll notice it's not told me that I've completed the mission. So I know that there is something else wrong with um, the undercarriage. Um, and obviously the undercarriage doesn't, doesn't just consist of uh, the main undercarriage here. There is a tail skid as well. So that probably means that there is something wrong with the tail skid. So let's have a look at that. Um, so I'm going to hit three. To go into inspection mode, I'm going to click on the tail skid, and there you go, damaged tail skid. So hit two, or one, or what have you, or three, click on this thing, and I should be able to undo the thing. Now it's not letting me undo it, and why is it not letting me undo it? Because I haven't jacked the aeroplane up. So uh, what I need to do is I need to go and put a trestle underneath the aeroplane. So you can see there, it gives me a little spot where I put the trestle. And now I've got the tailplane supported so I can crouch down. And now it should let me remove the tail skid. I click on that. And I undo all the little bolts that hold the tail skid on. They're the bolts that are holding it to the uh, rudder. And when all of those are off, off comes the tail skid. So right click uh, to get clear of the airplane and hit C so I'm not crouched. Have a look in the inventory and there's the tail skid and it is not a repairable part. It needs to be replaced. So over to the Spare parts truck, space bar, tail skid, tick, need a new one, sign for it. There you go. I've got that. So I've got myself a replacement tail skid. So it crouch down. There. Like that. I hit the two key. Click down. There's the tail skid off and up. Now you can see that it's told me that I've completed checking the undercarriage, but I haven't done all of the bolts so I could sign off this task even though I haven't done it properly uh, which would be a very very sloppy repair and it would mark me down for that um, so you want to be careful of that and make sure that you do completely repair it 
in every way. So obviously I want this off the trestle. I'm gonna put that there. Dump it. <coughs> and on my um, on my work order, I can see that uh, the task is uh, I've checked the undercarriage and that's ticked. I've re refueled the aircraft, that's ticked. Uh, but I haven't fixed the oil system, so I'm going to need to fix the oil system. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to get to the engine. Um, so uh, first up, to open the engine cowling. So I've selected the engine cowling and I need to undo the two turnbuckles and that opens up. Now I want to remove this engine cowling. I don't just want it hinged out of the way, so I'm going to click on it and there is the hinge pin. Pull it out and that's gone. Now the oil system, it comprises of the oil tank here which you could fill if you wanted to by removing this oil filler cap and then what I could do is I could go over there and get the uh, the oil bowser and fill the thing up but I don't think it, the problem is with the oil um, I think the problem is with part of the oil filtering system uh, so what I need to do is I need to get um, this top cowling off and I won't be able to get that top cowling off without getting the en right engine cowling off so I need to click on the right engine cowling and undo this, and then, that. and then I need to put it here, and I need to remove the pin, uh, and now I will be able to remove the top engine cowling. So I click on the top engine cowling, there are four bolts that hold the engine cowling in place. Of course, two of them are on the other side, but what that's, what that's simulating is me leaning over the aircraft and undoing the bolts from this side, so uh, there you go. Now we can see the engine. Now you can start taking all these bits off if you want to, uh, and I'll just point out something interesting here. Um, let's say, for example, I want to take off the carburetor. Um, so I click on it, and it gives me a kind of like, uh -uh, you can't do that. Now what that's telling me is that I could not remove the carburetor without first having removed the air intake pipe. So if I removed the air intake pipe, which I will do just to sort of demonstrate how this works, off comes the air intake pipe. comes now it is letting me access the bolts that hold the carburetor in place because I've removed the air intake so if you're not that great on engines don't worry about it it kind of gives you hints and stuff like that um, but of course I don't really want to take the air intake thing off so um, you know I could probably go and put that back on so air intake pipe I, you know you hit the one two or three key it'll highlight in gray what you put on. so on the thing that goes <coughs> Excuse me, and we tighten up the screws. And the air intake pipe. Now, it's it's giving me the, oh, you want to put things back together. So it's, it's um, giving me the end, top engine cowling highlighted in grey uh, if I wanted to put that back on. But I don't want to put that back on just yet because I've got to fix the oil system. So I'm going to go and look around the other side. Um, and what I can do is I can check things out. So there is the oil filter and there is the pressure filter. That would be two of the um, two of the, the systems that would affect the oil. Um, so if I look on my work order, um, what I've been told is that uh, there is a problem with the oil system. Occasionally the oil pressure is too low. Um, so it could be the pressure filter and it could be the oil filter. Now I can inspect these parts to, to determine whether they are okay um, in the same way that we did with the landing gear. So if I hit three and click on various bits, I can see that the pressure filter is fine. See that the magneto is in pristine condition. Uh, the timing gear should be fine. Yeah. The left ignition wires are fine. So all of that stuff's fine. So I'm going to guess that the oil filter is probably the damaged thing. So I'm going to inspect that. And sure enough, it is. It's damaged. So uh, I want to uh, I want to have a go at fixing this. So click on the oil filter. And there are two bolts that hold it to the um, timing gear casing. So I removed that. So now I've got that in my inventory. So if I have a look at my inventory, um, I can see there the, uh, the oil filter. And you can see I can have a bit of an inspect of it. 
something like that. And it tells me that the oil fixer is damaged, but it is repairable. So, depending on my skill level, I should be able to fix this thing. So I'm going to go over to the workbench. Now, um, the, how easy it is for you to fix things depends on your skill level to some extent, but there is a, a, a kind of like a mini game going on here. Um, and it doesn't really explain it too well if you just sort of like start playing the game, but it should become apparent how this works if I demonstrate it to you. So I'm going to hit spacebar for part maintenance, and I'm going to click on the oil filter, and I've got this thing here. Now, you can rotate it now with the, the walking around keys, the W, A, S, and D keys. And if we spin this around, you can see that there are a few points on this thing that are highlighted in yellow. So I've got this one here, I've got this one here, and I've got this one here. Now, in order to fix those, what I need to do is I need to oil them. So I will click on them, and it will allow me to oil them. Now, you can see here that it says restore status 0%, i.e. this thing is bust. So let's have a go at fixing it. Now, this is where there's a little bit of skill involved. Not massively so, but uh, here's how it works. I'm going to click on this thing here, and the oil can appears and you can see here that there is kind of like an oil gauge that's appeared and what I'm aiming for is I'm aiming to stop the the, the pointer that you'll see that will appear in the green so I'm going to click there and I managed to stop it in the green so the restore status is 33% so I'm on target here to fix this thing because uh, there are three points that need oiling well four technically uh, so I'm going to hit this thing here like that and I've got to try and get in that green spot there. So I'm going to click. And it was another good shot, 67%. Yeah. Um, so we're doing pretty well here. So I'm going to click on this thing here. Like that. And this one's going to be a bit tricky because it's a very narrow spot. But here we go. Oh, didn't quite hit it. Yeah. Like that. And then I'm going to try this one here. And hopefully this will be a bit wider. Like that. Oh, it's tricky. So and it failed. Now it failed because what you cannot do is you can't click and fill it a little bit and then click and fill it a little bit more. It's a one-shot deal. That thing starts moving and you've got to get it spot on. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a mini game in there. But if you don't manage to do it, uh, so if you don't manage to do it, then you look on your inventory, you can see that the oil filter is damaged and it's no longer repairable. So you only get one go at that. Now you could, if you wanted to, restart the task if, uh, if you like. But I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to walk over to the uh, replacement parts truck. Like that. And I can go and get myself a new oil filter. Like that. So it's not that it won't let, let me complete the mission. Um, it's just that you can get more points if you manage to do that and manage to repair it. And so there's, there's kind of a bit of a fun mini game in it, if you like. So I've got, um, because I've got a replacement part, if I look on my inventory now, I've got a pristine oil filter because I've just got one from the parts department. So what I can do is I can uh, come here like that. I'm hitting the two key. There's my shiny new oil filter that I am bolting to the uh, timing case like that and you can see that my primary tasks are completed um, now I'm going to inspect this just to uh, show you that because it is um, it's a brand new part it's in green um, and it's pristine yeah now I could if I wanted to start taking some other bits off this and you know having a go at repairing them and stuff like that if I wanted to but everything is pretty much okay so uh, I'm gonna put this airplane back together so uh, top engine cowling back on click that. and then there, as we know there are four bolts to fasten this now if you want to be anal about this you can go around the other side and uh, you know, uh, do it, do it properly. So on the top engine cowling, I can do that and fasten them in. So if I want to do it absolutely correctly, I can. So then what we've got is we've got the right engine cowling. So we pop that on, and there is a sliding hinge that we put in there, like that. And then we can go and close the thing down, like that. And we can fasten these pins here. Like that, and then of course what I want, want to do is I want to come around the other side, and I want to put the left engine on. So I'm going to slide the pin in, 
like that, and then I close the thing down, like that, and I fasten these up here, and we are done. Everything is done. The plane is refueled. I fixed the landing gear. Um, what I haven't done is I haven't dropped the thing off the jack, so I probably ought to do that um, just to be sort of kind of complete with things. Because the thing is still jacked up. I don't think um, that it would would actually sort of like prevent me from completing the mission. Um, for doing that, but um, strictly speaking, I should really uh, should really sort this out. So um, we can see there. That if I, oh, I'm going to come around a little bit there like that. I've got that thing. It's no longer up on the jack, so I'm going to pick up the jack and I can get the thing out of the way like that, and I can drop the jack. And all the uh, all the GSEs clear of the aircraft. Um, it's still chopped. It's down off its trestle on the back. All of the cowlings are fastened. Everything's done. So if I hit the escape key and look at my task, uh, the undercarriage is repaired, the aircraft is refueled, and I've fixed the oil system so I can go and sign that off. So we click here. Sign that off. And it gives me my marks. Check the undercarriage, refuel the aircraft. And there you go, like that. Now, uh, there's a bit of a glitch there. You can see that it's saying refuel the aircraft. What it should be really saying there is check the undercarriage, repair the oil system and refuel the aircraft. So a bit of a typo there, but it says perfect job. Now, strictly speaking, it wasn't a perfect job because I didn't manage to repair the aircraft part the, the oil filter, uh, I stuffed it up because I was kind of demonstrating that to you. So if I wasn't happy with that, I could restart the task, but I'll live with it. So we hit continue career, and you can see, oh, aircraftman first class is the next target. So if I hit continue career, like that, <coughs> there is a mission done. And it gives me my next task. Yeah, now, uh, this time you're required to fix the aircraft after an unlucky encounter uh, with uh, with an enemy aircraft. To do this, click on the hole when in disassembly mode. Yeah. So, uh, whilst practicing uh, over the sea, uh, we've run into a low German aircraft, probably a scout. Luckily, our Hurricanes chased him off, but he managed to hit us a few times. So, uh, this is a Tiger Moth, not really a combat aircraft. Um, but it's it's taken a few hits, so it needs the bullet holes patching up, and it, we need to refuel the aircraft. Now, uh, for those of you that are into your history, um, the Tiger Moth was actually a combat aircraft in World War II, right at the start of the... when the Battle of Britain was starting. Um, some of them were rigged up uh, to carry bombs, um, and some of them were, believe it or not, rigged up to carry poison gas. Um, for them to drop on enemy troops and paratroopers. And there was another very, very rare modification which was demonstrated to actually work but seemed a bit desperate. And what that was was um, they had cutting devices attached to the front of the aircraft so that the aircraft could fly at German paratroops and cut their parachute cords and and obviously they'd, they'd fall from their parachutes and die and you know that's kind of indicative of the level of desperation that they were getting to in 1940 in the Battle of Britain um, so uh, <coughs> the Tiger Moth was sort of a combat aircraft um, although you know uh, they, they didn't really need to use it that much um, in that role so here we go uh, I've got a task there um, to patch some bullet holes so here we go Here's our tire, Tiger Moth. Uh, we've got to refuel the aircraft as well, so we know how this thing works. You pick up the ladder, put the ladder in a suitable place, not too far away from the aircraft. Uh, pull up the ladder. We we'll remove the fuel tank. Okay. Jump off there. Grab the fuel hose. Up the ladder again, pop the fuel hose in, off the ladder, and to the back of the truck. Hit the controls, 
fuel the thing up. Put the ladder. Put the hose away. Fuel cap on. And we go. Put the fuel hose away. Off the truck will drive. See ya. So the aircraft is refueled, so now what we need to do is we need to patch the bullet holes. So let's have a bit of a look and see where the bullet holes are. Um, so you can see we've got some damage there. Now uh Tiger Moth is um, kind of a, a bit like a kind of World War One era aeroplane in that uh, it had um, doped canvas on the wings, doped canvas on part of the fuselage. Um, the original Tiger Moths had um, a lot of doped canvas on the fuselage. The RAF trainer versions had a bit more plywood going on on them. Um, and a few other modifications, um, but um, so we can see here that we've got some damage from some bullet holes. So you've got this kind of thing going on: bullet hole bent outwards. So we've got that. Now you just need to apply the patch. Switch to install mode and click on the patch ghost. So switch to install mode, bullet hole. And on it goes. Now it says here in an aircraft with a metal skin, you'll also need to rivet the patch in place. This place, however, patches are glued to the fabric, so no rivets are required. So we've got that one um, sorted. Come around here, get to this thing, bullet hole, bend outwards, like that, and then we've got a patch on there, and we're all fab. Here we've got another bit of damage, and we can't quite reach it from the trailing edge. So I'll tell you what we will do: we'll get the ladder out of the way. So I'll take the ladder, because you get shouted at if you leave GSE around the aircraft and service equipment. Uh -huh. So here we go, and like that. We've got that. Task completed, patch all bullet holes. So, um, all fab and groovy, um, everything sorted. So it would seem that we have repaired everything now. We just make sure that everything is clear of the aircraft. Like that, apart from the chops. And we have a look on our work list, patch all bullet holes, refuel the aircraft. So there we go, we sign that off. Perfect job. Da, 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 da. So I'm nearly, nearly making it to Aircraftman's first class. Um, I probably would have made that had I not um, stuffed up the the repair of the uh, the part, the oil filter. Okay, to give you an idea of how detailed the engine modeling is in Plane Mechanic Simulator. What I've done is I've completely stripped down the Gypsy Major engine of this um, DH-82 Tiger Moth <coughs> pretty much as far as you can go. Um, you can see that we've got the um, the engine block there and short of, uh, short of removing the guide pins for the the cylinder casings, there really isn't much more that you could take off an engine. Um, now, um, what I will demonstrate here is you'll notice that I've got the ladder here. So I'm going to take the ladder because occasionally it can be a little bit difficult to uh, to get to to some of the stuff to actually uh, to actually work on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the ladder here uh, and that fairly close. And then, oh, come on, you can do it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and squeeze in here and try and climb the ladder. There we go. All right. So if I zoom in here, um, what you can see is um, that there are 
various bits and pieces that I can fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this push rod in, like that, and then there is another push rod, another push rod, and I'm going to have to sort of maneuver my view around a little bit here because I've got the ghost of the uh, uh, the crankshaft. So another push rod in there, like that, and then there is another push rod, and another one there, and then I'm going to maneuver a little bit, like that. there's another push rod to go in there and then there will be one more push rod and my view isn't quite letting me, there we go, we've got that push rod because I, I wouldn't want to miss putting those things in because it would be very annoying to put the engine together and I forgot <laughs> to have put that in, so uh, there is the camshaft and I'm sliding that in now. Uh, just jump off the ladder and I'll go to the front of the engine and I've got the camshaft cap on and uh, I'm gonna fasten three bolts. The camshaft is obviously uh, uh, a set of cams that, the, uh, that are lift up push rods to uh, lift up the valves um, to, for the, the inlet valves for the fuel and the outlet valves for the exhaust so uh, you wouldn't want to forget to put that bit on it, it would be very annoying if you did so um, I'm going to come up the ladder and now if I zoom in what we're going to be able to do is there is the crankshaft and now what we want to do is we want to put the pistons on I can put a piston on and then I fasten the screws for that. And then we've got another bit of a bit on there. Last one. And then another piston rod. Another piston rod. So zoom in, and then what I want to do is crank your bearings on. on there. So we've got the uh, crankshaft on. So now what we can put is we can put the top engine cover on. And then there will be a lot of bolts to fasten down. Now strictly speaking, there probably would have been a gasket to put on there as well. it didn't actually make a spot on so you know it's not absolutely everything is modeled but I guess uh, I guess we can forgive it not not putting a, a gasket on there so all of these bolts are sliding in like that and then the nuts that fasten those in place get tightened down so we get a good oil seal and you'll notice of course that the engine is inverted with the uh, crankshaft at the bottom of the cylinders uh, sorry the crankshaft at the top uh, and the bottom of the engine casing uh, at the top and then the, the cylinders below 
um, so that the propeller can be attached directly to the uh, to the crankshaft rather than uh, using a gearing mechanism. Good old gypsy major there for you. So all those things are tightened up, and now. Uh, we should be able to get to everything without using the ladder. Uh, so it's just worth bearing in mind that occasionally it can be a little bit difficult to get to things. So then we've got the timing gear assembly. Onto the back of the engine. Bolts get fastened up. And we'll put the crankcase front plate on. We don't want to forget that. And then come around the back. All the ancillary stuff needs to go on. So we can put the pressure filter on. And the right magneto. The fuel filter. And then we'll come around the other side. filter up and then we'll put the left hand piece on so we've got all that now we need to start assembling the uh, the cylinders and the pistons and all that kind of stuff um, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look on the list here and I'm going to make sure that everything is um, in good condition because I don't want to be putting faulty parts back on there and it seems that, that everything's okay there because um, yeah, I don't want to put a broken piston ring back on the engine or something like that so um, let's crouch down and then let's a bit of a look so there's a piston and there's the gudgeon pin and then the piston and the gudgeon pin and another piston and it's gudgeon pin and then last but not least piston and it's gudgeon pin now of course what we need to do is we need to make sure that the um, piston rings are on and this being a gypsy major engine it has three piston rings per piston so one on there one on there, one on there, and then one on there, one on there, one on there, and then moving out a little bit, there's going to be one there, one there, one there, and then one, two, three, so piston assembly, uh, cylinder barrel, cylinder barrel, cylinder barrel, and cylinder barrel, and then I'm going to crouch down. Bit. and what we would need is we need the cylinder head gasket we've got that and we want one for this and one for that and then last but not least the cylinder head gasket for that one and now we've got the cylinder head gaskets in place we can put the cylinder heads on so cylinder head and the four bolts. Now, strictly speaking, you'd use a torque wrench for this, and you'd start on one side, then go to the opposite corner, then then do the same thing there, and tighten it slowly round and what have you. you go to the extent of making you do that, but um, other than having to use a torque wrench, um, that is the correct procedure. I 
Last cylinder head goes in place, last four bolts. So now we can start putting the valves in. Which of course are actuated by those push rods and the, uh, the camshaft that we put in before. So rock right there, three bolts to so hold the rocker mechanism in, and then there's the rocker bracket that goes over the top of that, and there are three bolts which fasten that in place, and then we can put the rocker cover on, and there's a bolt in the middle that fastens into the uh, rocker bracket, and then we go and do that same procedure on this. So, rocker mechanism, on it goes, tighten the bolts. And a rocker bracket goes over the top of it. Three bolts to hold that in. And then the rocker cover. With the bolt up the middle. And then the rocker mechanism for this. Rocker bracket again. Obviously what we need to do is need to connect the HT leads up to the spark plugs. Like that, and then come around the other side and do the same thing. So the ignition wire assembly on and then all of the HT leads connected. Like that. And now we can put the left engine cover on and there are two pins to slide in to keep that in place. And then we can come around the other side, and we can put the engine cover on this side. And in this case, it bolts on, and now we can put the air induction pipe on. Myself, but it does play all the animation for those uh, those bolts going in, and then of course the carburetor. and then the air induction pipe. So 
of that sort of busted up. So now I'm going to put the uh, top engine cowling on, and there are four bolts that hold that in place. Bottom engine cowling on. And there are eight bolts that hold that to the bulkhead. So now we want the front engine cowling on. bolts holding that in place. And now the S followed by the propeller and then the spin back mate. It should be all good. Of course, we all know that um, the real attraction of, uh, of this game or simulator, if you prefer to call it a simulator, uh, is the fact that you get to play with this thing here, uh, the uh, Supermarine Spitfire. Rearming the thing, uh, fueling it, and playing around with the um, Merlin engine. Um, and as you can see, it's a really very nice model of a Spitfire, as uh, as is the um, the DH uh, 82 Tiger Moth. Um, after you've uh, after you've done some work on this one. Graduate onto the um, Diablo Mosquito, but um, it's the spear, isn't it? That's what people are interested in. Don't get me wrong, the Mosquito's pretty well spit flat. Anyway, there you go. That's a um, plane mechanic simulator for you. Um, pretty cool. Got me elite dangerous cup here. <laughs> so that was um, Plane Mechanic Simulator by uh, developer Disaster Studio. Um, and I think you'll agree that that's quite an impressive bit of software. Goes into a great deal of detail. If you watch the review where I, uh, I put that Gypsy Major engine back together, you can see the kind of level of detail that it's got. Uh, and obviously, it's got uh, the Merlin engine simulated on it as well because you've got the Spitfire uh, Mark 1 and Mark 2 and you've got uh, the Havilland Mosquito which have twin Merlin engines um, and you can imagine how detailed that is um, because you're talking about very many more cylinders, very very many more pistons and spark plugs and all this kind of stuff and um, if you know anything about the Merlin engine you will know that that thing got through spark plugs like nobody's business. A spark plug on a Merlin engine lasts about 12 hours um, before it needs to replace it. Um, uh, it uses them up um, really really rapid. Um, so uh, there you go. Um, and as I say, if, you, if you're interested in getting hold of Plane Simulator, Plane Mechanic Simulator I should say, um, Disaster Studios, it's on Steam, it's in beta at the moment, um, and because it's in beta, that means that you can actually buy it a little bit cheaper. I paid, I think, £9.50 for it, but it's actually on sale this weekend, so you can get it for about seven and a half quid. Um, this being Easter weekend, happy Easter break. Uh, I hope you've had a, a nice weekend. Um, Ooh, the developers have said that um, when it actually comes out as a, a finished product, it's probably not going to be much more than that. So I would guess around maybe maybe 15 quid or something like that. But there is no better time to buy it than now because uh, you can get it really, really cheap. And if you do go on to the Steam product page for that, um, another thing that you'll notice is that the developers are, because it's currently still in beta, are very responsive to comments. Um, 
Uh, so that's another nice thing to see uh, from a developer that uh, they're responding to comments and I've seen that they have implemented some stuff that people have suggested. For example, they took the timer off as an option so that you're not rushing so you can kind of take it slow and enjoy it. That was uh, that was a suggestion that uh, some people, some of the users made on the beta version. So that's pretty cool. Um, now you, you can probably work out now why uh, I had that um, fixing a hole tune at the start of the video because we did literally fix a hole in the uh, Diaboland um, DH82 Tiger Mop. In fact, we uh, fixed several bullet holes. See, always thinking. <laughs> Now, uh, so uh, that's the end of this uh, this episode of Chuck's Hangar, but there's another one coming thick and fast, um, and you might even be able to see behind me what we're going to be doing for the next one, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a hardware review of this thing, which is the um, Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotas X, which works on PlayStation and it works on PC. This is one of those fancy throttles where you can split it into two, have the throttle and the, the joystick separate from one another or they can kind of clip together and what have you and it will allow you to uh, to program it and there's lots and lots of buttons on it um, so if you're into flight simulators or space simulators for example like um, Elite Dangerous um, where you need lots of buttons to work um, then uh, then it's a really cool choice so uh, look out for that um, I'm going to be uh, probably starting on that uh, later on today and it will uh, it'll be up on YouTube in a, a day or two um, so if you like the kind of stuff that I do, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe this video uh, and subscribe to my channel or uh, hit the, the little notification bell that you can see at the bottom um, so that you get a notification of when a new video is out. Um, and don't forget to put your comments down below, uh, see whether you, you agree with my review or maybe you think I'm an idiot and you completely disagree with my view. Uh, all, uh, I read all the comments and uh, I, I welcome your uh, Welcome your opinions and your suggestions on what I, what I can do and um, what, I can, uh, what I can review, uh, as long as they're not rude. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, get your, get your comments in there, but uh, that's um, Plane Mechanic Simulator. I uh, hope you enjoyed the review. Definitely check it out. I recommend it. I think it's a, a great, fun program, very educational, um, fun to play, and uh, uh, runs great. And isn't that expensive either, so a uh, good bit of fun. Um, and if you if you disagreed with my review, then um, then this is for you. <laughs> Cause it really doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, cheer bye from Jock's Hanger, uh, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Bye.